condition because the people sitting back in Washington aren't aware of everything that's going on on the ground around the world. I thought he did a terrific job, although I personally did not see any of his performances. It brought back uh, familiar faces and some American girls, which everyone enjoyed watching on the stage. And it was a big morale factor. It released the tensions of the troops that were constantly under pressure over there. He's going to be number one of all the entertainers that uh, we've had over the years. I suppose the, the younger people probably don't appreciate uh, all that he did for us. And there won't be too many of us left to uh, appreciate what he did, really. Everybody, I'm Carol Costello in today for Wolf Blitzer. Thank you for joining us just ahead this hour. He was the master of the one liner, the king of comedy and a hero to millions of American troops. Bob Hope is dead in Iraq. The search for Saddam Hussein, our coalition forces any closer to catching him. We're live in Tikrit with today's developments and we'll be taking your phone calls throughout this hour as well as your emails. We'll spend the first part of the show talking about Bob Hope. So call us now with your comments and your memories. We want to hear from you. Here's the phone number now, 1-888-CNN-0561, or email us at wolf at CNN.com. We're using Wolf's email box while he's away. He won't mind. Don't worry. Before we get to all of that, though, the latest on what's happening right now. Among them, Roberta, and he won critical acclaim for his role as Huckleberry Haynes. Now, Roberta is also an important play because it was during this period that he met his future wife, Dolores. At that time, she was known as Dolores Reed, and she was a young singer at the Vogue Club on 57th Street here in New York City. In 1935, Bob Hope went on to do the Ziegfeld Follies and shared the spotlight with Fanny Bryce, and then Red Hot and Blue with Ethel Merman and Jimmy Durante. Red Hot and Blue was very important because his performance caught the attention of Paramount Pictures and they billed him in one of his first major films, The Big Broadcast, in 1938. But here in Times Square, when it's really the crossroads of the world, you'll find many who simply remember Bob Hope for his efforts on behalf of our servicemen. They said that he is dedicated to the very end. Well, I think he was just great right to the end. Uh, I don't think uh, he ever stopped thinking about the serviceman and actively, I believe within the last 10 years, was still performing for troops all over the world, every war. Great man. It's not just people who remember him from the Second World War. Some of the people I've talked to in Times Square this morning who are well under 40 say that, you know, Bob Hope has been a fixture in their lives every single day that they've been alive, and it's going to be really tough to imagine life without him, David. Catherine Herridge in Times Square. Catherine, thanks very much. Well, Bob Hope touched a lot of lives, and he was admired by generations of comedians. Joining us now, comedian Pat Cooper, who I guess took some of your cues from Hope. This, no, no. No, no, none at but, all. Let me but he had he had this timing that was impeccable. Jack Benny and Bob Hope were known for their timing. You I didn't get took anything nothing from that? off them because you can't take anything off them. They were special. They were individuals. When Bob Hope, Hope walked into a room, there was some magic about this man. When he, he was right there with everyone. So you know you don't take them from a Bob Hope. You don't take them a Jack Benny. That era is over. You try to be yourself. You try to you know, bring to the public who you are. Bob Hope, it's over. If he were alive today, young kid would never get a job. Because the young people today, you know, that's not their kind of humor. But his humor did span so many generations. But that was years ago. Today it don't span. I told you, as a girl backstage, I said, did you like Bob Hope? She go, who is he? And she didn't mean that disrespectfully. She didn't know. She's still working on, uh, what, what's it, Britney Spears. I told her Broccoli Spears. She didn't understand that either. <laughs> so there's your answer. As Bill McCutty was saying, though, you get 80,000 pages of jokes in, in the Library of Congress from Bob Hope. I mean, the legacy of the man remains no matter what, no matter who doesn't know Let me tell today. you something. He served more time in the service than servicemen. This man went all over. He took Christmas time, Easter time. He went on holidays. He did it when, when a lot of people would say, well, maybe not on the holiday. That's when he was in the trenches. And performers fought to go with him. They wanted it. They'd kill to go with him. Not only because it was great for them, made them feel good, because they knew that this man was loved, and they were going to get some of that love. And he cut a path in that regard. Uh, of course, you have some 
folks in Hollywood that are known for doing nothing but criticizing uh, folks overseas. But, but even now, there are a lot of people who go overseas and say they do it because of what this man did. Absolutely. And I got news for you. He's, uh, he's the last and uh, 100 years old. They should have a parade for him. He's a very fortunate man to have that talent and sustain all these years. That right there, they, that, that, that's a medal. Every that's a medium medal. that we've had in the 20th century and the 21st century, starting from vaudeville and going Absolutely. through radio. Do you know anybody else who's been able to do it in every medium? Like yes. Time since his last public appearance. After all, he was 100 years old. And uh, his, his health had been declining in recent years, uh, and it had been some time since he had been seen in public. All right, very good. Uh, George Lewis joining us from outside the Bob Hope uh, home in Toluca Lake, California. Many people we've talked to here today in Times Square have, and a lot of people are learning the news themselves as they're walking through Times Square, seeing on the large monitors pictures of him and he, seeing the scrolling news reels that, that he is the king of comedy has died today. I met somebody very interesting here I wanted to introduce you to. His name is Artie Shepard, and Artie himself was on vaudeville. He's been in entertainment his whole life. You were in vaudeville in the, in the 50s, exactly. and uh, you're a fan of Bob Hope, and you're yeah. telling me that he represents a different era of comedy. Yes, he represents the class of comedy. He's the king, as you put it. And you see, when the Lord makes a good person, he made Bob Hope. And he gave him his gifts. And that's what you call class. And I would say that that's how I enjoyed Bob Hope. Now, there's some good comedians around today, like Chris Rock. He's, yes. a, good, he's a good comedian. Yes. Does he match up? Well, I'd say this is a different era. There's a lot of more liberal aspects connected to what they're allowed to do I would say maybe his comedy is accepted in this new generation more than our old generation would, would, would accept so. Artie Shepard thank you so much for joining us yes. today we have to go back to you Carol okay. all right Jason Bellini reporting live from Times Square in New York City this morning Joining me now live from the Pentagon vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Peter Pace general welcome thank you good morning you remember seeing Bob Hope live in Thailand back in 1972. We That's won't right. ask you how old you were then, but tell us about <laughs> your memories. Well, it was an opportunity uh, for many of us who had been uh, serving in Thailand. It was a kind of a uh, isolated uh, spot. And of course, for many, many years, I had watched uh, Bob Hope on television and seen him with many troops. And for all of us, having him come to Thailand uh, just represented to us, number one, what a wonderful human being he was individually but he brought with him uh, so much of the United States and made us all, made us all feel uh, much more part of uh, of being home at that Christmas time in uh, in 1972 so it was more like a little bit of America coming to you to visit sort of like a family member it sure was and he, as you know he, he always brought uh, great folks with him who volunteered to come and uh, it was like having a, a small part of America come visit us that far away from home he did a great service to his country. Can you describe how much, even though he never fought a day in combat? Well, I don't think you have to fight in combat to do, uh, to do things for your country. And certainly, uh, Mr. Hope, uh, in so many ways, over so many years, I mean, by the time I saw him in Thailand, uh, he was 70 years old and uh, already had established uh, so many years of, of support to, uh, to our armed forces. Uh, you just cannot quantify in any uh, meaningful way in my, in, in my mind, just the enormous impact he had on literally hundreds of thousands of men and women who served in uniform. Bob Hope was there for all of us uh, before my time and after. Yeah, I think he uh, visited troops in every war from World War II to the first Gulf War. He was, he was quite something. We were trying to um, think of someone who equaled him in the world of entertainment today and we could not come up with one name can you absolutely not there is no equal to Bob Hope and that's why he's such a special American General Pace thanks for being with us this afternoon or this morning I should say many thanks and thanks Thank for your you memories as well Thank you. Bob Hope occupied a special place in America both on stage and off President Bush acknowledged that today too today America lost a a great citizen. We mourn the passing of Bob Hope. Bob Hope made us laugh and he lifted our spirits. Bob Hope served our nation uh, when he went to battlefields to entertain thousands of troops from different generations. 
We extend our prayers to his family, and we uh, will mourn the loss of a, of a good man. May God bless his soul. And again, we want to hear from you. Call us with your Bob Hope comments or question. Our number is 1-888-CNN-0561. Be there or not be there. Mm -hmm. The fact re remained that we were there, and because we were there, he was going to come over and bring some... Let, let, me, let me just clarify the question. I guess where I was going was that, do you think that he made it easier for U.S. entertainers to entertain troops? Are they more willing to do that because of Bob Hope? Oh, I think so. I think there's been many that have followed in his footsteps and, and entertained the troops. Uh, but I'll tell you, in, in the ones I've seen, and there was a dual agenda. Number one was to entertain the troops, but the second one was to, to get a lot of viz for themselves. Uh, you never saw that with Bob Hope. He was there for one reason, and that was for the troops alone. Well, I think what Bob Hope did <clears throat> was he kept reminding people of the difference between the war and the warriors. And as wars became more unpopular, as World War II, very popular, morphed into Korea, more controversial, which morphed into Vietnam, most controversial. I think what Bob Hope tried to do is say, irrespective about how we feel about this conflict, those are our sons, and we need to treat them well. Brought the personal aspect out in each soldier. He, he brought the fact that there's a difference between the war mm -hmm. and the warrior. And the people who are and fighting. And the warrior or our kids. Uh, General, before we let you go, and you've been gracious to hang in there and give us some insight on in all this, uh, your thoughts about this man outside of the military realm. Uh, he must have made you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, you know, it, it, many times he just threw the script away. And, uh, and uh, you know, he was just a wonderful human being. As I say, we've, we've been in contact with him a couple of times since then. And it's always the same. Uh, you know, matter, more and more infirm, but still had that wonderful, wonderful twinkle in his eye and that, you know, good humor that he brought to everybody around him. You ever golf with him? I, I'm not a golfer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I'd ask because he I was a big one. I tell everybody my IQ is too high to play golf. <laughs> Good line. General, thank you. I thank do you. appreciate it. And uh, Jerry, thank you for the Always insight. A uh, quite a guy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. I met him once. Yeah. Um, was that awesome? Well, it was, <laughs> it was funny. If you think back to your youth, you'd be watching The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson or Jack Parr, and then there would be this sudden, like, disorientation, this buzz, this shriek. It's because Bob Hope walked in on the set without any announcement. He'd probably been doing a rehearsal for his show, and he figured if there was a television show live, they would be glad for him to drop in, which is really disruptive in live television. Right. Well, when I was news director at WNBC-TV in New York, we were on the air the same time that Letterman was taping. And once he got off a of Letterman taping and knew there was a newscast going on across the hall and just walked in, <laughs> you know, the cameraman gasped, the cameras <laughs> swung around. It was Bob Hope invoking that unique status he had that if there was a live TV camera, especially if it was owned by NBC, he had every right to go check it out. Well, and he got such a charge from the live performance. He really did. Jerry, thanks a lot. We do appreciate it. Bob Hope, uh, dead at the age of uh, 100 years old on this Monday. And for much more on the life of Bob Hope, you can go to the website of NBC News. That is, of course, msnbc.com. You can take an interactive tour of his life from vaudeville all the way to the movies, the USO, the Oscars. And you can listen to a free audio clip of Bob Hope singing that song, Thanks for the Memories, all of it on msnbc.com. Again, coming up in about 45 minutes from now, we are expecting a Hope family member to provide some additional information on the passing of Bob Hope. We expect the news conference to take place. We will bring that to you when it takes place right here on MSNBC. A lot of news, as we mentioned on this Monday, and when we come back here, we'll cover more of it. The search for Saddam Hussein. U.S. military says he can run, but he can't hide forever. So are the forces really hot on this trail? We're going to take a look at that coming up next. Yes. Hi. Hey, thanks a million for coming on. Your thoughts about Bob Hope? Bob Hope has given the Medal of Honor of the civilian, and he deserved it because he was, he gave himself, of, I mean, instinctively. I mean, he... He went to every place. He went to the front line. He went to the small, small places. He went to big places, and he, he gave them so. And he, uh, he was the one who kept the. Uh, in every war, he brought up the morale. What did he? Do, what did he do to really change entertainment? I mean, he saw the beginnings of radio, comedy on radio. He saw the beginnings of comedy he on television. He saw the beginning of everything. He was. He did every medium. He did uh, Broadway, he did the radio, 
He did television. He did movies. I mean, he was a all-around man. What was, gate? What allowed him to flow through all those different media? Huh? What did What did he have that that gave him that ability to succeed in whatever medium he tried? <coughs> he was talented. <laughs> yeah. A talent unlike any, uh, any... Uh, he, was a, he, was a, he was one of a kind. One of a kind. Do you think that his kind of com comedic talent could be appreciated today as it was during the entire 20th century? I think he went through everything. I mean, he, uh, he hit all the, all the ages. I mean, he didn't, you know, he, he, he entertained the soldiers. He entertained children. He entertained uh, uh, politicians. He could change uh, because he had that that, that gift of, uh, of getting to the people and getting that, getting to that level. Sid Caesar, great pleasure to talk to you, Sid Caesar, one of the masters of the medium of television, and we have Pat Cooper in with us, who's one of the masters of the medium of stage as well. Did you ever see Bob Hope on stage? Yes, I saw him uh, many years ago. I believe it was at Paramount Theater. Because he was Paramount, that's where he made his movies, and uh, he was uh, he was Bob Hope. The place was jammed, lands around the corner, and he got up. And he uh, he did uh, his monologue, and uh, was always fresh, always new, always up to date, and uh, that was it. In other words, when that show was over, that was he never talked about it. Now, now, well, what's new? The next show, because you can't take yesterday's standing ovation with you today. That's over. What are you going to do today? How did he do it? Did he have a staff? Of he writing? didn't know how he did it. It was natural. The man was born. He was a natural. God blessed him with that kind of talent. And it, it, listen to me. If he were blind and God forbid death, he would be that man. He was gifted. Not all of us get that. I got maybe 8% of that right on my toe. <laughs> but he had it in his whole body. This guy was born to be funny. He was born to be an actor. To be, it was natural. He went out there. He did it so easy. And nobody read a card better than him. When he was reading a card, you never knew it. This man had his eyes on the card. But most, people, most people don't realize there was a talent to reading those oh, cards. Oh, absolutely. I, listen to me. Uh, I, I got news for you. I tried. It's difficult because you lose some of your timing and you lose some of that flair of, of the comedy. This man was easy. His timing? Is that oh, the word? You know timing? what it is? You know what it is? He had faith in himself that if the card blew up in front of him, he would go on. Right. And it came natural. It's like a great boxer, a great fighter, a great, a great artist. You know, the Van Goghs and these kind of people. There's only one. And he was the last of that. Then the 100 years old, hey, they should have a parade for him. They should say, we don't feel bad he's gone. He lived to be 100. God bless him. I'm listening. I'm 74. If I make 75, you know, I'm looking to win a turkey. <laughs> well, Pat Cooper, it was a pleasure to have My you. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. And so do me a favor. Don't keep in. calling when somebody dies. Call me when somebody's alive. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But you know something? You call me on this one, and you call me on Buddy Hackett. Not a great talent. I thank you. Take Pat care. Cooper, Fox great News is the best. There's God no bless party. you, they Pat. They gave me the hat. I swear to God, they <laughs> gave me the hat. Pat. Pat Cooper, thank you very much. A lot more on Bob Hope coming up. Also, the situation in Iraq. There are some new developments we want to keep you abreast of. That'll be coming up right here on Fox. How do you think he felt about his own mortality? Well, I, he was a lover of life. I don't think he looked forward to death. He, he, he was so full of life, he wanted, he, if he had a choice, he would have lived to 100 years. But I think he was a realist, too. He knew that every man has his time, and I think he was reconciled to it, especially in the later years when he became more frail. Uh, but he loved life, and I think he tried to hang on to it for as long as he could. He certainly did. Lawrence Quirk, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Live from Los Angeles. Up next, Bob Hope and his USO days. We're taking your phone calls and emails at this hour. Our number is 1-888-CNN-0561. Marines and nurses, construction workers too. We thank you so much.